Okay, so trying to boil it in the house produces way too much steam, so we abandoned that idea, decided we needed to do it outside. So for the maple syrup, I rigged up this outdoor propane burner, and we're going to boil it off out here and see what we get. So we got about a quart of reduced maple sap, not quite a syrup yet, but it is already really sweet. That's from our first try at boiling on the grill. I took the big bucket off of this black walnut in the yard and swapped it out for the smaller ones because it's not producing much. And I put the big bucket over on the walnut tree that is producing like two gallons a day. So that one needed the bigger bucket. We went ahead and collected the rest of the sap from all the trees and I got about almost a gallon of maple and five gallons of black walnut. So that's definitely what we will need to boil down next. All right, y'all, this is day two um, day one was a success with that maple syrup as a sample. I uh, did not boil it down all the way. I had to stop in the evening. But right now I have enough time to start this batch here. And we're looking at about five gallons of black walnut sap. So this is the black walnut sap. I have my makeshift burner going. And we're going to see what we get when we boil off all of this sap. Now this rig here does work. It takes a lot longer. I know, I know. As soon as I get a chance to go buy a sporting goods store and pick up a turkey fryer burner, I will. I just have not had the chance to do that yet. And we have sap flowing. Uh, conditions look right for the rest of this week. All right, on the maple tap. We have almost a gallon between these two. And this one has none. So I'm gonna say that this is a bad tab and we will probably have to pull it and try again in a different spot or just pull it. But if we're getting sap out of the other two, I feel like we just did something wrong there. So let's uh, see what we can get. What are you doing? How you feeling? You okay? Naughty babies are in time out. They went around the corner of the house when Ryan wasn't looking and nibbled on an azalea. So they're in time out. Gave them charcoal drench to be on the safe side. He says he didn't think they got any really, but azalea is extremely toxic to them. Let me get you some hay. I think we could spare some hay for these babies. Yeah, I think so. You got there, Liam. I have a chicken. You do have a chicken. Is it your friend? Yeah. Aww. Those golden commas sure are friendly little chickens. Not as friendly as Squirty Wordy. Now, Squirty, you better not eat any seedlings popping up in these pots. They could be things I want to keep. I just want to keep that. That is our cardboard pile that disintegrated from all the rain. So we're going to separate the plastic out of it and burn it. <laughs> well, my sure takes her time drinking. But he's been done for a minute. <laughs> well, my just takes her time. She's no rush. Betty acts like she's starving every time. <laughs> and then she likes to bump Wilma. She doesn't steal the bottle from her. She just keeps climbing on her and bumming into her, making it hard for Wilma to stay on the bottle. Betty, you're a boop. You little, you little stinker. Cute baby. <laughs> I love how their eyes are different colors. Wilma's eyes are really light colored, almost hazel. And Betty's are like almost black. Steel. Gray. 
Oh, I hear, is it finishing? Nope. I'll just have to tilt it up a little bit higher, Mom. Thanks, Mom. What are you doing up there? Be careful. I was super fortunate to catch the wood chipper truck right in front of my house. And they dumped a whole new load of wood chips. So now we've got that load and that load to spread out over the garden area. Meanwhile, Ryan and the boys are cleaning out the girl shed, the she shed, the seed room, the feed room. What is it actually? Everything. It is the, the shed of many names. Yes. Are you still holding that chicken or did you put it down and, and you're holding it again? Yeah. Okay. Dump it out, guys. You gotta get the hay out of there. It Dump it out, Roro. Dump the toys out so you can get all the hay out and of them. Put, put all the toys back in one at a time. Yeah. Wait, wait, don't knock over the baby. Ready? One, two, three, jump! Make sure the chickens are watching. Oh, they want to see what's in there. They want to explore. Han Solo? I remember this figure. Is this one yours? Yeah. Oh, you even got the gun with it? Oh, that's cool. I didn't know those were out here. This one. Take this one. What are you going to find something to play with, too, birds? <laughs> yeah, good hay. <laughs> yeah. So you thinking, Mom, I needed some hay. Ryan's got about five gallons of black walnut sap we're cooking down over here in our makeshift grill. It's working pretty good. Are you hanging out with me? Yeah? You thought that was a good idea to sit here? Uh -huh. Oh, and show me a pretty rock. Can I see? So I'm just sitting here observing them. <laughs> They're observing me. They want to come out. I would let them out if I thought that everybody was paying close attention but right now Ryan's working and I'm about to go look for some eggs and so I don't want to have them get distracted by an azalea bush again <laughs> so it's really important that if you suspect that one of your animals has been in contact with a toxic plant that you immediately drench them with activated charcoal so we do a scoop which is a human dose you can also get um, and then capsule and and put the pill down there down them and make them swallow that but we just we do a little scoop and uh, mix it with water so that you can drench it and you keep an eye out on if they are getting diarrhea or if they are throwing up or acting strange or sick or anything so we're not seeing any of those signs, so we're probably caught it early, caught them from eating it before they had a chance to eat it. And <laughs> you've got a chicken now too. That chicken sure likes you guys, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Sweet chicky. So after about two hours, if you are seeing any of those concerning symptoms, you're gonna want to actually give them some milk of magnesia so that they will poop it out. You're going to want them to get it out of their system. The fastest way to get the toxic plant materials out of their system is to poop it out. So unfortunately, it's not a fun experience, but it could be life-saving if you do it in time. So it's very important. Ideally, we would have a better setup than this with a flat pan and a wood fire going, but this is just our first experiment ever with collecting sap. So before we put a lot of time and investment into building something that works better, we wanted to see if we even got enough sap to make it worth our while. And it looks like we might actually be getting enough sap to make it worth our while. And it should be boiling more though. So I'm gonna see if Ryan come over here and tweak it a little bit. All right, so we are going on an egg hunt. I saw three hens leaving Miss Elsie's yard this morning. 
to come back over to our yard. So I think this is where their eggs are hiding. Let's go check it out. Well, despite looking behind every little piece of metal and inside of every bush, we're not finding anything over here. Daddy found something. Not an egg. Not an egg. But a skull. Huh, is it a clue? Did crab? the chickens bring that over here? <laughs> Probably yeah. not. Is that chipmunk? Wait. A squirrel or a chipmunk? Probably a squirrel. So last night we left it boiling off as much of the black walnut as we could and we reduced that five gallons and do about half but it was too hot to pour into any of our containers so we put lid on it and left it to cool overnight. So now I've got to get it back into the refrigerator until Ryan can boil off this afternoon. This is really turning into a fun and quality experiment. If I've done my math correctly the five gallons of black walnut sap could produce as much as a pint if the sugar ratio is as high as the maple sap. But usually black walnut is a little bit less, so it'll probably be less. But the good news is, is we are still collecting sap. The conditions are still perfect for us to have a sap flow. So we will be getting more sap from the trees and reducing even more. The maple sap that's been reduced tastes like... It's as sweet as coconut water, but it doesn't taste like coconut water, but that's the level of sweetness it's at right now. And it definitely has like a pure cane sugar type sweetness to it. It's, it's natural tasting. It's hard to describe. It's, it's almost earthy, but without like being not in a soil way, more like in a, when you breathe in a fresh air, when you first walk outside and that, that first, of nature. That's kind of what this stuff tastes like. I could see how people would drink this as a health tonic. And the black walnut sap is not as sweet at all yet. Obviously, it's not reduced as far as the maple that we ran first. And it has hardly any sweetness, actually. So I think we probably won't be getting as much as we thought um, or hoped. But let me tell you, it has the neatest nutty flavor to it. I cannot wait to try this as a completely reduced sweet syrup. Keep following along and we will continue to share our journey on this fun new experiment at Wholesome Root.